I regularly get the question, can you run EIA programs on the Mazak machine control? To which I say, absolutely. In fact, it's estimated that 85% of Mazak customers program their machines offline and run G-code. Mazak gives their customers the best of both worlds by offering Mazatrol conversational and EIA programming. In today's Mazak Minute, I'm going to show you how to run EIA programs on the Mazak machine. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Mazak Minute. I'm Mike Zilich, part of the HEH technical team. Today's topic, we're going to talk about running EIA programs on the Smooth G X AI control as well as the Smooth EZ. What you're going to see is you can go from the simple 2D part program to the more complex 5-axis program where you see a, a lot of code. On the control, we have standard on our machines, EIA ISO input, the program numbers on the Smooth G, X, and AI control, I can have eight numeric digit uh, numbers, or if I go and put a alpha character into it, I can take it up to 32 characters. Um, what I like to show people when I do that is I can put a rev number on the uh, program number. That way you know you actually have the correct program because it reflects the rev of the part print. Next on the Smooth EZ, you can still do eight numeric digits and your, the alpha characters, it's 15 characters. The tool offsets, we have a total of 2,000 offsets available. As for the work offsets, we have a total of 306. You're gonna have G54 through G59 and G54.1P1 through P300. Macro variables, we have several to work with. We have a total of 600. You're gonna have your pound 100, 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900 series. And then there are local variables, total of 33, that go, uh, yeah, one through 33, and you can actually have them nine nests deep. Um, that's like if you're in a sub-program and you're doing macros, you'll use the local variables, that way you can pass them from sub to sub. We do use macro variable B programming format, so a lot of times you'll see that if you're doing a macro program, we can do a if then, a while do, and uh, we can do some uh, uh, trig functions, and you can really customize a program. So if you have a custom routine, you can uh, transfer a variable or what we call an argument to the subprogram, making it a shorter program for you. Can cycles. Um, you have your standards. Uh, most people are accustomed to G81 uh, is a drill cycle. Uh, tapping is going to be G84. Um, if you want to do rigid tapping, it's going to be 84.2. But you have all your other boring cycles. One that I like to use uh, that a lot of times customers don't use is you have that G71.1, 72.1, where you can do a chamfer cutter clockwise or counterclockwise, start in the middle of a hole, and it will actually arc in, arc out, and uh, give you the chamfer at the top of the part. Some new, uh, new features in the EIA. Uh, we have a new EIA programming screen. Um, it's referred to as the Quick EIA. Um, this shows the process list, a 3D image, and the program itself. So if you look at the screen, I have it shown here. On the left side, you see the process list. And by operation, I can click on any one of those operations, and it will jump down to that part of the program. Very useful when sometimes you might have a program that's a couple thousand lines long. You don't want to scroll through it to get to that point. 
The bottom section, you're seeing the EIA ISO program. And then in the uh, toolpath window, you're seeing the actual toolpath of that G-code program. One of the very strong benefits we have is that I can zoom in on a toolpath and I can tap, maybe I'm seeing a section of the program that doesn't look right to me. I can tap on that segment and what you're gonna notice is in the program, it's gonna drop down right to that line of code. So like I said, sometimes there might be a couple thousand lines long. This particular one, I'm at line 1,814. And all I had to do is just zoom in on the toolpath and click on it. Another feature we have that's quite useful is uh, copying a section of one program and merging it into another program. This gives me the ability to basically uh, cut and paste uh, certain items. You can see I can have the one program on the right side and I can move it over to the opposite side. And then if you're first time with uh, using EIA programs on the machines, uh, recommend you work with your uh, applications uh, guys either at Mazak or at the distributor level and figure out from your CAM system how you program your part, whether it be from the center of the tool or for the cutter edge. And there are gonna be four parameters that are shown on the screen right now that a lot of times I like to run off of the Mazatrol tool data page. Uh, one of the benefits is that you're only maintaining one length of the tool at one place and instead of forgetting to change one at one and uh, running into issues. The other parameters deal with the actual diameter, like I said, as well as a lot of times uh, I'll use wear, where I program to the center of the tool, and I can comp the tool a very small amount, maybe a few thousandths, whether it be in the negative or positive direction. A little bit of the formatting. They have a nice uh, section in the EIA manual. Um, if you look in the uh, section, you'll see that there is uh, tool length settings based on Mazatrol tool data. And you'll see these couple uh, 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 diagrams here that will show F93 bit three, F94 bit seven. Those are used for the tool length and then F92 bit seven, F94 bit seven used for the tool radius. And on the control, I have the uh, VC Easy 20 um, on my smooth cam up right now. And on the screen, what you're gonna see in the top left corner, you see the work number. That's uh, m and &E for Machin uh demo, and I'm doing a dynamic cut, basically that tool path that uh, we were looking at that I zoomed in on. Over to the right of the screen, you're seeing I have the uh, modal and load uh, screens up, as well as I like to have the program monitor in the lower right section, where that's gonna actually scroll through the program as I'm running the program. If I hit my far left arrow key, you're gonna see that we can go to the program. And on the program page, you're seeing just the full program. I have the ability, if I wanted to, I can come here and say search, search down, and I can search down for a character, hit enter, and it would jump down to that portion of the program. Other things I like to do, like I uh, spoke earlier on the PowerPoint, is that I like to go to the quick EIA. The quick EIA is gonna be up here to the top of the screen, to the, the left icon of the keyboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that. And this is how you see how I get to that quick EIA screen. If I uh, want to go to a section of the program, I can come over on the left side. If I click that toolpath, you can see it jumps down right away to my finished contour toolpath. Another scenario I was speaking about earlier, I can zoom in on a toolpath. I can click a line segment and it goes right to that line. 
I can also, down in the program, I'm gonna go maybe one, a couple lines down. If I click on the line of code, it will show me that code in red. Again, helping you be able to troubleshoot your program faster. Coming back to my main keys, let's go back to the tool data. The tool data, basically you're seeing is, I was talking about, I like to maintain one length of the tool, and that would be covered right here under this length. Again, I like to use the where comp being set almost to zero. So the way I have my parameters set is that I will use this actual diameter correction right here. And that correction is actually a radial amount. Mazatrol program, the conversational, will use this actual diameter, but the EIA programs will use this actual correction. Next up, you're gonna see the tool offsets. I, right now, I'm not using those right now, so you're gonna see them all set to zeros. Notice down below in the lower right, I got 42 pages of this, quite a few of them. Instead of having to page through each one of them, what I can do is I can say jump to offset number, and I'm gonna say jump to offset 100. And you can see it gets me right to that part of the screen, that page number. I can use the way I have the parameter set, I can have it add this amount to my Mazatrol uh, offsets. Work offsets, I talked about the standard G54 through G59. And if you look at my page numbers, you're gonna see that again, there's 39 pages. And I talked about that G54.1 P1 through P300. Again, I don't wanna page through 39 pages. So what I can do is I can do a search for the P number. And again, I'm just gonna use 100 as an example. And I'll type in 100, enter. And you can see it brought me right to that page. Next thing I'd like to talk about is when I, I think I, we uh, spoke about copying a section of a program into another program. So I'm gonna go back to the program page and I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna turn off the EIA quick uh, tab, getting me back to the program. And again, the program that I was using is ME Demo Dynamic. Down below, there is going to be a display two, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my uh, program file and I'm gonna find, I got a program in here called Dynamic Old and I'm just gonna open that up off to the side. So Dynamic Old is on the right, D uh, Demo Dynamic is on the left. I click in the program, you see how it switches between the, it goes to the other screen. And just for now, so I know that I'm editing this program, a lot of times what I might do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do a program edit. And what I like to do is I'll put a, in parentheses, a bunch of asterisks. I'll hit enter, enter again, and I'll put some more asterisks. This gives me a good way of knowing where in the program I added data to. I'm gonna close up the uh, keyboard. And just for instance, I'm gonna take this top section here, let's say from 11 down a little ways, and I'm gonna import that or copy it over to the other program. So I'm gonna go into program edit. There's going to be a copy soft key, and I'm not, you, you have two choices. I can do a program copy or I can do the line copy. I'm gonna do line copy. I'm gonna come from where, I'm gonna move my cursor up here and I'm gonna copy down to that certain section. Once you have what you want copied, you can see it's highlighted in the black. 
I can go ahead and hit the input, and notice your prompt is saying final point input. I hit input, and now the prompt is telling me where do you want to copy it to? Basically, I'm going to change programs, and you're going to see I'm going to go from the right side, how you got that blue taskbar at the top. If I say change program, it's going to jump over to the other side, and I am going to come down to that line 2176 where I have that space. And I'm going to, if you follow the prompt, it says copy to where, I'm just going to simply hit enter. Okay. What you'll notice is that now, over on the left side of the program, I copied that section of the program in there. Maybe that wasn't exactly what I wanted to copy. The nice thing I can do is up here at the very top of the screen, you see that green arrow to the left? That is an undo. So I can actually come here and press that and take it back out if that's not exactly what I wanted to copy. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this informative. If you'd like, please leave a comment below on future topics you'd like me to cover in the Mazak Minute. Thanks.